today I'm here to do my wrap up for the month of May and I actually read a total of seven books and at the start of the month I didn't feel this was gonna happen. After the wonderful month that was April I just started going downhill and I could barely read more than like 40 pages a day and I was getting very concerned but then I was able to read a couple more at the end of the month but I also listened to three audiobooks this month and only read four physical books which would have helped a lot so I'm excited to talk about the books that I read so let's get into this. The first book I read was These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spinner. This was a book that I was trying to finish for the hours but it didn't happen so I finished it early on in May and I actually really enjoyed this and I'm so glad I finally read this book because I've had this trilogy for so long and I mean I don't know when I'm going to get to the sequels because I've got a few things that I need to read first. I really liked Lilac and Tava's story. I thought the romance in this too was a really slow build and I also didn't expect this to be a survival story where they're just two people stuck on this planet and weird shit starts happening. Like that's not at all where I thought this was gonna go but I really liked it and even though Lilac was kind of a bitch I still rooted for her to survive and to make it and just to live and like I just really liked their dynamic and it was funny and it was great and there was also all the like life and death situations so this was definitely a good book and I'm so glad I finally read it. So the first audiobook I listened to was Sadie by Courtney Summers and oh my god for months I'd been hearing people talking about Sadie and I was kind of like oh my god because thrillers aren't really my thing. I can be very impatient in books and TV shows and movies that I sometimes google these things too to be like what's happening. So thrillers really do not help me because I used to be so bad where I would just skim read a book and then I would read it even though I knew everything that happened. I had really bad issues when I was a lot younger and I try and not do it anymore but it does happen sometimes where I'll be like oh accidentally looked at the last page and then read the last chapter. So the good thing about Sadie being on an audiobook though was I never did that because there's no way for me to really skip forward without stuffing up my audiobook. So basically the whole point of that story was that I actually really ended up enjoying Sadie though. I loved this so much and oh my god the fact that there was over 30 different voices in this story and the way that it was it was Sadie's point of view as she was going through the events of the story. And then we have a podcast which is hosted by Wes McGray and he is trying to find Sadie. So I loved having the interviews and then trying to follow Sadie's story where we see it happen from her and then we're trying to see him find her and it was so intense and Sadie's life is so shit and I feel so bad for Sadie and like the ending is not what I thought it was going to be and I'm really sad now but this was such a good book and I definitely recommend listening to it as an audiobook because it was so good. Okay next I read All the Invisible Things by Orla Collins so I actually started this book in like March and I just was reading like 20 pages and I just had no idea what was going on so I set it down then the hours happened and then I picked it back up in May and it took me 10 days to read this it's a contemporary and it should not have taken me that long but I just wasn't a big fan of this book and I feel so bad for that because this is only my second review copy and I feel bad for being like I didn't really like this. So this book got three stars from me so it isn't the worst thing I've ever read but there's a few topics that get brought up in this book that I was not expecting and I just felt like they didn't really have a place in YA contemporary novel. Pez wasn't my favourite character I just felt that he was very annoying and he only really thought about himself. And Vecchi's like discovery of trying to figure out how to define herself is if she's straight, gay, bi, was really good though and I did enjoy that part of the story. But overall, it just, it really didn't make it to that mark where it was amazing and there was just too many issues. But like basically this story is about Vetti and she moves away from home when her mother dies with her family and then four years later they move back because her dad needs to go back to his job and he can't just keep working from home. And she goes back there and she's so excited because her best friend Pez from when she was younger is still there and he's just really distant with her and he doesn't really want to hang out with her and he's just different. And she gets to meet all of his friends and she also meets his girlfriend and it's just about their general issues in life but something that's really good though is it didn't back away from topics that most books normally wouldn't mention so it's like different stuff like where they mention their periods or they mention having hair on their bodies or they mention like sex in like a way that it is it's so amazing like these are the things that I like to see in books because it makes it feel more real but 
again, it just really was a hit or miss for me. So at this point in the month, it was nearly halfway through and I just was not reading anything. So I just decided to pick up a book because I wanted to read it. And even though it did take me like another week to read this book, I was still very excited. And that was First by Laurie Elizabeth Flynn. I have had this book for so long and I've been so intrigued by it because it's about this girl who offers this service where she lets virgins sleep with her so that they can give their girlfriends a good first time. So it's the girlfriend's first time, but not the boyfriend's first time. And this was a really hard story to read because like they are still cheating on their girlfriends, even though they're trying to get better at doing sex for their girlfriends. It's a weird concept. And the reason Mercedes does this is because she didn't have a great first time. So she wants it to be good for other girls. And like the logic is a bit weird. And I mean, she is trying to do a good thing, but this was a three star read for me because Mercedes was like kind of an unreliable narrator. And I really really didn't feel for her a lot of the time and she was just like oh I'm the poor rich girl that has issues kind of character that like yeah that happened but like they really played it off so that it was so cliche like it wasn't any different and also her love interest in this book because at first he seemed like he was like this really smooth dude and he was so cool and like a player and then halfway through the book the author decides he's the real nerdy geeky dude that's really clumsy and trips over his feet and he doesn't know how to talk to girls and like I don't understand why you needed that device vibe because you should have made him either like a shitty asshole the whole time or just a geeky dude the whole time. He can't be one and then be the other like it, did, it didn't make sense to me. I am really glad that I finally did pick it up but it was another one that just wasn't great. <laughs> okay next audio book was The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman and this is another one that I decided just to pick up because it was a new release and it became available in Scribd so I was pretty excited and this really felt like the Vampire Diaries even though there's no vampires but it's set in this small town and there's four founding families and they all have different superpowers and they have to do these rituals and they have to protect the town from this thing called the Grey. And Violet, the semi-main character, she hasn't been in this town her whole life and then she moves back with her mum and she finds out that she has powers but she doesn't know anything about it because her mum never told her. And Justin's another main character, Isaac's another main character and Harper's another main character and they're all from a different family and it's just about how the Grey is getting stronger and it's going to come out. Like it's basically it's just this like gray foggy blob thing like I don't even really know if the monster was actually ever described but this book was okay there was a lot of different point of views which was like fine because we got to see everyone's inner thoughts and stuff but there was just so many dramas between all the characters that I was just like I want to know more about the monster and like people dying <laughs> like I was all here for more bad stuff happening and it didn't and I'm pretty keen for the next book though to see what's gonna happen but I definitely recommend it and it was an alright audiobook so I don't know if it'd be any different reading this one physically or not because I guess when you do an audiobook or a physical book you kind of only do one or the other and who has time to read both versions you know. This was okay I gave it four stars so it was an okay story and I did end up liking like most of the characters except for Justin because he's like the golden boy and everyone's obsessed with him and I was like Ugh. God damn, get over this dude. Okay, next is another book that I started to read just because I really wanted to, and that was None of the Above by I.W. Gregorio. And this is another one that I've had for the longest time, and this is actually about an intersex character, which I thought was really interesting. Being intersex means that even though a female can look like a girl on the outside, she has male chromosomes and not to mention like some male body parts on the inside. So in this book, Kristen is at prom and she's about to have her first time with her boyfriend when something clearly isn't right so she goes to the doctors and she finds out that she's intersex and she kind of freaks out about it because she doesn't really know what she is anymore and she doesn't know how to react and live with her life and suddenly someone at school finds out and they tell everyone and everyone suddenly thinks that she is a male pretending to be a girl and everyone treats her like shit and there's Facebook posts and there's videos and different things that people are sharing and she finds it really hard to be out in public and it's just about how she tries to handle all this new information in her life and trying to going on with it and trying to find a really good support network and know who her true friends are and to have her family around her and I gave this one four stars but I can't actually think of the reason why I didn't like it as much I just oh. Like, it was really disheartening to see how people would react and it's really sad to know that this is how people are. Like, people are pretty shit as a whole. Like, there is individuals that are great people, but as a whole, 
people can be kind of shitty. This definitely is a book I recommend picking up. You get to learn a lot about being intersex and the author actually based this off someone that she met who was intersex and she went through a lot of doctors trying to make sure that she did everything right and she didn't stuff up anything in her research and the way that she wrote this book which I really think was good because she was really dedicated to writing a great story. So if you do want to know more about this subject matter it is a good one. And the last book I listened to was The Bride Test by Helen Wang and oh my god I'm so glad this came out on script because because I listened to the Kiss Quentin a couple of months ago and Stella and Michael are just my everything so I was so excited to read this book and it only got four stars from me because I do not know what can live up to Michael and Stella like I really did like Kai and Esme and the relationship that developed with them was really cute but the way that Kai just was so against the fact that he's like I don't feel love I can't feel love like Esme is not the person for me I can never be that for her when he clearly loves her was the worst thing ever because it's just like dude Dude, just figure out your shit and just get to her and just you know but I really did enjoy Esme I loved how much she learned in this book and she wanted to go to school and she just wanted to provide for her family and she definitely is a perfect match for Kai and it's crazy that his mum was able to pick the perfect character for him but I'm still so excited because we're gonna get a book about Kwan next and Kwan deserves the world so these are the five books that I read physically this month and I am so glad that I did decide to start listening to audiobooks because this is all I would have read if I didn't okay I had a pretty bad month because I only read seven and I bought 16 books but the reason I bought so many books is because in April I made a promise to myself that I wasn't gonna buy a single book and I was gonna save my money for my TBR jar so when May came I bought a couple of books and throughout the month as I saved more money I bought a couple more books I also got some cheap ones off my Facebook group page that you can get really cheap books and I also bought a few books that I've already read as audiobooks and yeah I'm gonna have quite a big book haul coming for you guys because it's been like two or three months since I did my last one so I have been saving up this haul for you like the pile is over there just just chilling waiting for me to haul but I actually have one more book coming in the mail that's gonna be a June book that I bought but Anyway, okay, time to talk about what challenges I got with my TBR money. These Broken Stars was a book by two authors, so I added $5. But then I bought three new books and I lost $57, so my new total was $10. So then I read Sadie, which was read a book about siblings, which added $5. All the Invisible Things was a book that includes a wedding for another $5. Then I bought six new books and I only spent $15 because, again, a Facebook page. So my new total was $5. Then I read First, and that was a book with purple on the cover cover so two dollars then I read the devouring gray which was a book with gray on the cover because it's actually the word gray but also the book just has like a gray vibe on the cover I feel it's kind of more bluish but I still think the word gray should count um none of the above was a cover with just text so another five dollars and then I read the bride test which was a book with yellow on the cover so my new total at the end of May was sixteen dollars so I did end up spending quite a good chunk of my TBR money fund at the start of the month so I'm hoping over June to save up a bit more money because I actually have like a list of books in my wish list still on book depository that I want to buy like now but I can't buy them now because I need to save the money to be able to buy the books but anyway guys thanks for watching this wrap up I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time bye